What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm gonna break down some other factors about the markets and how things are looking, in my personal opinion. Why tomorrow is gonna to be a very important day as we have the PCE data report coming out. But before I begin the double's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening to the markets. As you guys could tell, SPY had another sell-off today as we were kind of anticipating. I did talk about this 523 area to be tested, and I said if that broke, look at 521. That's very close to where the low was of the day in the 521 area, and SPY ended up holding up around this range. But the question is, what's going to happen moving forward? Why is tomorrow such a big day? And the answer is we have PCE data coming out an hour before the market opens. This is going to have a big effect on how the market ends up moving. Please note that the, when the CPI reports came out, uh, things did show some improvement in the month of April, for the month of April data that just came out. So when PC comes out for tomorrow, by the way, it's for the month of April. Uh, this data is delayed quite a bit. And we already got the April data for uh, you know, CPI, and the data was actually not quite bad. So that's actually a very good sign for PCE to be decent, and that does help favor a uh, more positive reaction. So uh, just to be very, very clear, uh, CPI was decent. It's also, uh, it does influence a PCE to some extent, and PCE is more um, kind of like accepted by the Federal Reserve and such. So we'll see how things end up looking. Uh, now, from the way I see things, I just want to make it very clear that from how we're looking for PCE, we're actually going to be expecting month over month around 0.3%. Uh, it's most likely going to be very close to expectations, if not below them, looking at the previous data. Uh, year over year, we're looking at, for all items, 27 to 2.6%. It's most likely going to be aligned with expectations, too. Same thing with core. Year over year, we're looking at 2.8 to 2.7%. And the same thing with uh, core month over month. For PCE, we're expecting the same thing, 0.3 to 0.2%. Everything should be very close to expectations, if not better, based off what CPI gave us. But once again, even though that's more probable, I can't make any promises. I can't say that with 100% certainty. So we'll have to just be very open-minded and see what the reaction is just to be safe. Now, for more data about the markets, I just want to call out that for today, it's Thursday. In the morning, we had Kohl's and a couple of others. I went over these earnings in the morning. And for today, we just had Costco and Dell announce their earnings, which weren't too bad. Costco beat on profitability and sales forecasts, but the share price is, uh, it did actually come down a little bit. It wasn't like that horrible. Uh, so we'll see how things go, at least for the time being. Uh, pretty decent uh, fiscal reports, in my personal opinion. And we saw their net revenue grow growing up about 9.1%, so not bad whatsoever, too. And we're seeing continued growth, at least as time goes on. Looking at Costco, uh, things are improving for their EPS. Nice beat, in my opinion. And I think that as time progresses with these you know, decent-looking forecasts, they are beating more expectations and there is more potential for them. Uh, looking at the after hours, we are still down a bit despite pretty decent earnings. But that is what tends to happen depending on like events when we buy the rumors, sell the news and such. So that's how things are looking. Uh, the other earnings that we had was from Dell. Unfortunately, the share price is actually down quite a bit for Dell. Uh, looking at the way things were looking, revenue was not bad. It was up about 6% uh, year over year. Not the strongest relative to what expectations were. But despite the fact that that happened, we are seeing the share price tipping because their AI server sales have failed to impress investors. So not the best of earnings overall. Uh, for their overall guidance, it was actually so-so overall. We are starting to see a little bit of decrease in their operating income, though. And they did end up doing some share repurchases, which was pretty good. So good and bad things were announced, but their overall growth was not as strong because some sectors, such as their AI service sales, are a little bit down. Uh, and that's the reason why we ended up seeing this big little shift in the share price. So overall, the share price is actually down despite them having so-so earnings. And we're just going to have to go forward with that. Now, when it comes to the fear and greed index, we're about to enter fear if the market dips any lower tomorrow. We'll see if the market becomes fearful or not, or if we're about to get a big bounce. Gen generally, when people become fearful, that's when you want to become greedy. So we will see if the market shifts from here or not. On top of all of this, I just want to call out that market momentum is quite greedy. It's kind of dipping a little bit. So we'll see if anything shifts here. And then also the puts and call option positioning is quite fearful. We are fearful because of the fact that uh, more and more people are buying puts. They're starting to you know, you know, know, make their way back in. They're closing their calls. People are expecting the market to crash, this and that. All the talk is going crazy again. And we will see if they are correct. Are we going to see more downside or are they about to bounce? Uh, are we about to see a big squeeze instead? 
The VIX is at resistance very close to our 50 daily moving average. Haven't We haven't been able to break that quite yet. So we'll see how things go. The last thing I want to call out is the options. We have over, uh, I would say very, very close to about 450 plus thousand or 550 plus thousand, excuse me, of these calls expiring. And we have over 1.5 million puts expiring with the majority of them being out of the money. Uh, 2.79 puts to call ratio with max pain being at this 520 area. So things are not looking uh, that crazy in my opinion. There are a lot of puts expiring. So the question is, will the market makers end up just squeezing the remaining shorts and siding more with those who have calls? Because the majority of calls are out of the money or is it going to be vice versa? Are they going to try to get more of these puts from out of the money to in the money? So it could go either way. We'll have to see what the shifts are, but just note the majority of positions are puts and that could lead to a change. So what do I think is going to happen to the markets? What's my personal opinion? SPY is at critical support. We held 521 to 523, this range. And we're going to be watching to see if we get a bounce or not from here. If we're bearish after PCE data comes out, we have to see this thing lose 521. Then we'll be sticking all the way down to at least 518 for another decline. If we're bullish and we get a bounce, we're going to be looking for a push all the way up to fill our gaps. And we're going to be looking for a nice move all the way back up to at least 526, if not higher levels like the gap fill up here. We're going to eventually fill this gap if we get a big bounce from where we currently are. What do I think is more probable in my personal opinion? Looking at the trend on SPY, I do want to call out that we have a possible wedge forming. Uh, I think I could draw out a wedge like right over here. I haven't actually done this yet, but you could draw it out kind of like this. Uh, if I were to kind of like adjust this, uh, one thing worth noting about the wedge is that uh, this could lead to a big shift as well. Uh, so with the potential wedge that's forming, I could even like have to redraw it like this, but it doesn't really matter. We have this wedge that's forming right over here. I'm going to now close these pennants just to make this very clear. Typically, these do lead to bounces. So that's one thing that's worth noting. We're holding critical support. That's another thing. The third thing is the fact that we've dropped this hard approaching PCE. And we have a lot of shorts expiring. So I favor the bullish case a little bit more. I think it's a little bit more likely the market will bounce. But remember, guys, always be open-minded for anything just to be safe. I could be completely wrong. Maybe the market continues to decline and this wedge does not play out. So we'll see. But I do have a feeling that they might try to you know, cause a little rebound and the market's due for that. And we might get a little bounce based off technicals. For NVIDIA, we are dipping. We're currently at gap support right now. If we're bearish, okay, you want to see NVIDIA lose this green line right here. This is our 20 EMA. If we lose this uh, 1,090 area and we start dipping like this, we could easily fill this gap down to 1,068. If we bounce off this, we're going to be looking for a move back up towards 1,120. I favor that's going to try to bounce, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. For a few more things, I want to talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is already trying to rebound just a bit, but we'll have to wait and see if that ends up being the case. We are forming kind of like a nice double bottom like structure. And if we hold our 50 EMA around the 68,200 area, then we could try to push all the way up to 69,000 plus. If we lose 68,200, then yes, we could dip lower, but I have a feeling that it might try to hold this and try to rebound. So that's going to be key for how we end up moving. For uh, Tesla, Tesla, in my personal opinion, uh, I just think that right now we have a nice range. Uh, we have resistance currently at this 178 to 180 area. We have support around 173. We love to bounce off that area. And so far, it's looking to me like Tesla might attempt to rebound. So I like the four hour. We're actually showing some life right here, getting some new volume. It did try to bounce only to get a little rejection before getting bought back up again. So it's showing some potential. I'm seeing some potential on this. One could even argue that we have like a nice cup and then handle like structure. So it depends on PCE. Decent PC could easily push us to 182 plus again. And if we get a hot PC, we could be dipping back down towards 173. From a technical standpoint, let's just ignore the news. We're just focusing on technicals. This does favor upside. We might be looking for a move for 182 tomorrow, especially because PC will most likely be decent. For the QQQ, we're looking a little bit more bearish, at least as of right now, but we're at support at this 450 area. So this trend is weak. Now, if we get a good PCE and this is a trap, we get a big bounce from here, we could easily see the QQQ try to push back up to 453 and 455. And if we're bearish and we lose 450, we're going to be looking for 448 and 446 for the gap fill. Uh, so either way, both possibilities look probable, but I'm still hoping that we do get a bounce because of how much we've dipped and how the market's shifting to fearful. That's when you want to become greedy and all the shorts that are piling in. So we'll see if that ends up being the case. For Apple, Apple has a very, very nice looking structure right over here. If we're bullish and we break past 192, we'll be looking for a pump all the way up to about 193. And if we lose 190.5, we're going to be dipping all the way down towards 
our uh, 50 EMA around 189. That's where this yellow line happens to be. So those are your levels on Apple. I favor that Apple might try to hold up. It is showing some life right now, and it does look like it wants to push up back up to at least 192.5. So that's looking a bit more probable, but just to be safe, we'll see if that ends up being the case. One last thing, NEO. Guys, I've been calling out NEO for the last few days. We're up 10% for the day already. I was talking about upside potential. That's been correct so far. Could we kind of cool off a bit? We could actually kind of cool off a little bit, retest like 5.25, 5.3, but I still see more potential upside coming for at least 5.6 and eventually these highs. I think it might try to balance and we might be looking for more upside approaching deliveries. That's going to be coming out approaching June 1st. So either tomorrow or going into Monday, there should be more upside coming and I still favor more upside for the charts. Anyways, guys, that is it for the main five I typically talk about and alongside a few others. Let's now focus on the rest of the tickers and break down what technicals tell us and what's probable with PCE data coming out. So Palantir, we talked about a balance that's coming. I said that yesterday, and that's what's happening so far. If we're bullish, we break past 21.88, we're going to be looking for 22.5 again. If we reject here, look at 21.3 as support. If we lose that, look for 21. The chart is looking a bit more bullish as we have a nice uptrend being established. I just want to push a little higher, so I favor upside a little bit more. So if we break past the 200 EMA, I'm going to be looking for a push for 22.5. I think it's more probable that we try to do that, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. I favor upside for Palantir, but just to be safe, we'll wait and see what PCE gives us if pc happens to be hot and my projection is wrong we could get a rejection so you want to be open-minded to anything but i do favor the upside a bit more for super micro i know a lot of people are interested in this we've been dipping quite a bit to 800 800 is going to be a key support if we're bearish look for a, a drop all the way down to about this 780 then 767 area and then if we end up bouncing we're going to be looking for a push all the way up to about the 200 ema around 856 uh, 831 then 856 my gut is telling me it's going to try to bounce off 800. I could be wrong. It depends on PCE, of course. I'm starting to actually think that that's more probable. So we're going to be looking to see if there's a bounce. Can we get back above 831? And we'll see if that ends up being the case. For Rivian, we came all the way down uh, to the level we called out. We called out 10 to be tested. We tested this during the pre-market only to get a rebound of, of some bullish news. So it might retest the 200 EMA at 10.6, then look for a continuation move up towards the 11s. I think 11.5 could be coming. If we lose 10.6, we're going to be tipping all the way down to about 10.4, but I fear it's going to try to push a little bit higher from here. What else is good is when you zoom out all the way, we have a nice looking inverse head and shoulders like structure. This is looking a little bit more bullish as we approach the month of June, just like other EVs like Tesla. For SoFi, so if I came all the way down to the target we called out, I did mention that it might be dipping all the way down here. Now we're trying to rebound a bit. Watch uh, 6.91. If you break that, 7 is coming. If you reject off that, we're going to be dipping. I favor is going to try to break out towards 7 one more time. For the IWM Russell 2000, we showed some life today, getting a nice cross, and the 4 hours looking a bit more bullish. If we break 204.5, look for a push for 205 plus and eventually 207. If you reject, we're going to be dipping all the way down to 203. I favor upside as a stronger possibility. For AMD, AMD, in my personal opinion, is approaching support around 163.5. If we lose this, we're going to be dipping all the way down to about 160. If we bounce off this, we're going to be looking for a test of about 166. I favor basically trying to rebound a little bit, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. For ARM, ARM is actually kind of dipping a little bit, but there's an uptrend being established when you zoom out. So it could dip a little bit more. We could actually be looking for a test of either 118, maybe it goes as low as 115, but then I'm going to be looking for a bounce between 118 and 115 all the way up to like the 120s. So look for a little dip and a bounce is the most likely possibility off one of those supports. Coinbase is looking pretty good to me. Uh, you know, even though there's some weakness right now for the shorter term, we're going to be looking for a test of about 227 to 232. Somewhere between that range, it might try to bounce. So I think it might dip a little bit and try to make its way back up to the 240s. So look for a dip and a bounce. For Amazon, we're actually looking kind of weak on Amazon, but we're approaching this key support right over here. This is where the previous resistance slash support happens to be at 178. If we lose that, we're going to be dipping all the way down towards 176.5. If we bounce off this, we're going to be pushing back up to the 180s. I have a feeling it's going to try to bounce off PCE, but I could be wrong depending on what the data looks like. So we'll see. I'm hoping we try to get back above our 4-hour 200 EMA to turn back to bullish, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. For Meta, Meta is dipping a little bit. We could be dipping all the way down towards 
four, uh, 462. If we lose that, there's going to be a bigger dip coming. If we hold that, we're going to try to rebound. So we'll see what ends up being the case for Meta. There is a possible head and shoulders, but do not solely trade based off these because these can be traps. So we will wait and see. Not financial advice, by the way. We'll see what happens with Meta. I'll be very open-minded nonetheless, uh, but there is some risk of downside if we end up losing 462. We'll see if we get a balance. It could balance thanks to PCE. Microsoft has been dipping quite a bit. We had a big red day today. Uh, we're going to be looking at support right here around this 411 area. If we lose this, we're going to be dipping all the way down towards easily 406 and lower levels, like uh, 400. If we bounce off this, we're going to be looking for a pushback above 415. If that breaks, we'll be looking at 420. My gut tells me it try, might try to rebound a bit, so we'll see if that ends up being the case. So be very open-minded. For Google, we're actually at previous resistance becoming support around the 173s. If we lose 173, we're going to be dipping all the way down towards 170. If we hold this, we're going to try to rebound and hit 175. So we'll be very open-minded and see which way we end up going. For GME, uh, we're going to be looking at 22.4. If we end up breaking through this, there's going to be a bigger push coming towards 25+. plus. If we reject here, then we could be dipping, but I do favor that GME might try to push a little bit. We'll see if uh, PCE affects this AMC is currently at the 200 EMA 4.14. We have to hold this support. Otherwise, AMC is going to have a lot of downside coming. Uh, we're easily going to fall into the threes if we end up losing that. So we got to balance right here on AMC. Uh, if we do get the balance, we're going up to 4.5. If we fail, it's going to turn very bearish. Uh, we'll see if we get a balance. I'm hoping we get a balance right here. It has to. Uh, DJT is dropping quite a bit uh, because of some po political news and you know a lot of things going on. So we'll see. It might gap down tomorrow. We'll see if we get a bounce or not. Watch resistance at 48.4 right now. And our support's all the way down here at... So we have this support right here at 46 and 43.75. Maybe it tries to rebound a bit that makes its way lower, but just be careful depending on politics. The VIX is trying to push higher. It's still... It was bullish, but now it's starting to show some weakness up here. So if it gets a rejection, we have these gaps to fill below. That would signal that the market's about to basically form a bottom and try to bounce. So we'll see if the VIX comes down to fill some of these gaps or not. I'll be very patient with this nonetheless. The 10-year treasury yield is starting to contract a bit. If this starts to dip down towards 4.5, this could be bullish for the markets. Markets could bounce. And for the dollar index, uh, if we continue to fall here, we're going to be looking for a move all the way down towards 104.5. Uh, we'll see if we get a rejection. If this does reject, this can help the market bounce. But if it breaks past 104.8, then this could start pushing higher. We'll have to see what the move is from here nonetheless. Anyways, guys, that is it for the video. I want to thank you all so much for listening. Get ready for tomorrow. It's going to be a big day. And we will see if the market gets a rejection or not. Are we about to see a big drop or is the market about to bounce? Once again, guys, CPI data was decent. The market bounced off that. And there's a very good chance that PC is going to be decent. The market will bounce. That does look more probable to me. But I'm not going to promise it. I'm not going to guarantee anything, guys. I want to say that it's very important for us to be open-minded and just give this the time it needs. And we'll see what the data gives us, okay? So I'm not making promises about anything. Let's just see what it gives us. Yes, it's a little bit more probable that the market gets a bounce looking at technicals and such. But just to be safe, we will wait and see, all right? So we have a big day coming up. We'll see what the PC data gives us an hour before the market opens, and we'll see how things go. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a very, very awesome night slash evening or wherever you guys are around the world. Take care, and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning before the market opens to report how PCE data looks. All right, thank you, and peace out.